All right, so you've just arrived here in the country, you've picked up your rental motorhome and you're about to set off for the road trip of a lifetime. But is it safe to freedom camp here in New Zealand? Well, if you're new to the channel, welcome along. And if you're a returning subscriber, hi. Uh, my name's Bronson and my wife Chelsea and I, we spent 15 months traveling around New Zealand, South Island in our caravan with our three children. Um, and we often get asked a lot about freedom camping how safe it is, what sort of tips we can give people. Um, and so today I thought we'd look at sort of five tips I've got for keeping safe while freedom camping and trying not to annoy other people. And also ultimately if it's a safe and a good idea uh, to freedom camp here in New Zealand. So over the course of our 15 months on the road, we stayed in some pretty beautiful freedom camping locations. We're talking like the side of the ocean, like right on the front of the ocean at Monkey Island or the side of uh, a beautiful pond like Pinder's Pond or the lakes in Cromwell, you know, these stunning freedom camping locations that you could just stay at for free. Swimming, you know, sitting there watching the sunset, like incredible locations. The NewZealand.com website, which is kind of like our tourism website here in New Zealand, puts the number at around 500 freedom camping locations here in New Zealand, which is pretty mind blowing. 500 spots you can stay for free. Um, to be honest though, when we first left, um, home and, and got on the road, we didn't want to buy a freedom camping. We were against it. We were worried because essentially this caravan was our home. All our worldly possessions were here, you know, cameras, laptops, you know, um, everything was here and we didn't want to park our caravan somewhere public, I guess, you know, a freedom camping spot that maybe didn't have the best security. And leave it for the day go do a day trip in the car or you know go to the supermarket or whatever so it did take us a couple of months to warm to the idea of freedom camping and then by the end of our 15 months we couldn't be any more pro freedom camping <laughs> we love it <laughs> and um some of the shots that were hopefully on the screen just then probably show you why we love it as well not just because it's free but because it's you know pretty incredible locations so what i thought i'd do is give you five tips um to make your freedom camping journey experience safety uh better easier um share with you a little story of when it didn't quite go so right for us and maybe was a little bit scary um the sort of one time in that 15 months where we were really unsure about it and i guess try and answer the overall question of how safe is it to freedom camping here in new zealand all right, so tip number one, and this seems like a no brainer, but I think it's very important to reiterate is don't park on private property here in New Zealand. There have been cases in the past where people have parked in people's driveways, on their paddocks and their farms, um, places they're not supposed to park and they've got in trouble. So I think it's really key that if you are gonna freedom camp, you freedom camp in the designated area and not just wherever you want to um, because you could upset someone basically. It seems like a no-brainer, but don't park on people's private property. All right, so now that you're in your designated freedom camping area, you're not on someone's private property, tip number two is to stick within the rules of that area. Now these are gonna change wherever you go in New Zealand, um, depending on the town, the councils, bylaws, that sort of thing. But what you'll often see in New Zealand is say a big car park at a surf club on the beach. There might be a set number of car parks that are, are reserved for freedom camping. Now that say that's five car parks. All these other car parks over here, those are for people to use, the locals to use, visitors to use to go to the beach, that sort of thing. Now what you don't want to do is creep out of the, that um, boundary, I guess. You know, you show up and those five car parks are taken. You go, I'll just park one over and you park there for a few days. That's a really quick way, I think, to annoy uh, some of the locals and the people that use that car park and the more people that do that the more it kind of spoils freedom camping here in New Zealand you also want to check the number of nights you're allowed to stay um, and make sure you don't overstay obviously um, and also some freedom camping car parks and sites uh, will only operate between a certain number of hours so it might be a public car park during the day but then after six o'clock at night you're allowed to camp in these so it does pay to pull up to read the signs, to have a backup if you can't get into your main freedom camping area that you were kind of aiming for, to have a backup somewhere. Um, and just don't sort of like creep, I guess, and push the boundaries, right? Now tip three is safety and numbers. One thing I would recommend 
uh, especially if you are traveling New Zealand solo, um, is that stay in freedom camps where there are other people. And maybe even go as far to talk to those people, to get a feel for those people that are staying there. Um, I think that there is a lot of safety in, in numbers of staying somewhere. And actually our sort of only freedom camping horror story, I guess you could call it, came when we were staying in the middle of nowhere by ourselves. So, yeah, I always feel a bit more comfortable if someone else is there or a couple of people are there. You know, obviously don't go and park right next to them, but maybe one car park over, have a chat to them, get a feel, you know, for what they're like. And it's great to meet people out on the road and, yeah, sort of camp in numbers and groups. Now, along with that safety, tip four, I would say, is have a torch, like a high-powered LED torch. Um, or if you're doing a van fit out, maybe think about some sort of exterior security light or motion light on the outside you know if you're doing your own um, you know fit out of your van some sort of external light this caravan's actually got lights on all four walls on the outside I can flick switches up here so if I ever heard someone snooping around I could flick a bunch of switches and it kind of illuminates around but I think if someone was snooping around your doors are locked and you kind of pop a torch out through the window if someone was looking to break into your vehicle they're probably going to get scared and leave you know as soon as they see a, a high powered torch also handy for other things like breakdowns and getting around at night but yeah i think have a torch somewhere some sort of usb rechargeable you know um, so you don't need to carry around heaps of batteries and just have that torch on you at night and tip number five i think would be to do a little bit of homework read some reviews some google reviews um, look at what other people have said about the area talk to other people in that area that have stayed there um, there are apps like CamperMate, which are really good. It's kind of like the, I guess, trip advisor of camping here in New Zealand and Australia. Um, so yeah, have a look at people's reviews. If in doubt, I would say just move on. If you pull up somewhere and it, and it feels off, you're the only one there, doesn't feel quite right to you, follow your gut and just go to your backup, I'd say. Um, there's always another option in most towns you're in, right? Some towns in New Zealand are really pro-freedom camping. They even have signs out saying, we welcome freedom campers. Some towns like Taupo, uh, where we live, are becoming less and less freedom camping friendly. So, um, yeah, I would say that, yeah, just always have a backup plan and trust your gut. So we had one kind of scary camping experience. Um, we were staying on the west coast of the South Island in this beautiful spot called Punakaiki. It's home to some famous pancake rock formations and down the road we found this freedom camping spot that was in the middle of nowhere we had no cell coverage it was right on the beach literally a, a gravel car park and then some flax bush and then this beach and the beach was incredible it had this hidden cave with a waterfall in it seals on the beach like and just a, an amazing spot we stayed there we were the only ones there it was probably like a wednesday or a tuesday it was midweek and we thought we'll stay there for a night and then we'll carry on up the, the coast we were woken up to the sound of a chainsaw, um, probably five meters from the caravan at 1 a.m., 2 a.m. And for the next hour, we just heard chainsaw on and off. And I contemplated jumping out and hooking the caravan up and taking off. We were looking out the windows. We could see this kind of old ute parked out there um i didn't want to go out and talk to the guy we just heard this chainsaw so you imagine waking up to the sound of like someone starting up a chainsaw outside your caravan pitch black you know there's no light pollution around it's just it's yeah it was quite scary at the time what we realized the next day we actually talked to someone we were woke up in the morning we had our breakfast we're like let's get out of here we're never coming back to punakaiki and there was a local down there having a morning swim and I kind of was a little bit kind of shaken up about it. And I said to him, hey, this is what happened last night. And he said that native timber washes up on the beach. Uh, and you're not actually allowed. That, that whole coastline, you're not allowed to take any wood from the beach. So you imagine this old hardwood tree log washes up on the beach. You're not allowed to take it home and make coffee tables or whatever. So this guy was down there in the middle of the night. I guess like taking wood illegally off the beach. But he was soaring up wood with a chainsaw so he could put it in the back of his ute and so we looked around and actually saw the piles of chain you know of sawdust and where he'd taken it off the the stumps and we realized okay he was just taking wood but it kind of freaked us out and it kind of um i guess from that point onwards we always thought let's stay with someone else um 
and maybe somewhere ideally that has cell or internet service in case something goes really wrong. If we were in a motorhome I think we would have just jumped in the front seat and taken off. Um, but I didn't want to go outside and hook up the caravan, you know, you got to wind up the legs and get it on the tow ball and hook all the chains up and everything. So it wouldn't have been a quick getaway. Um, but yeah, definitely a very freaky way to wake up in, you know, at one o'clock in the morning to the sound of a chainsaw. So ultimately, is freedom camping in New Zealand safe and, and should you do it? I think yes, I think it's, it's safe. Um, I think the key though is to follow the rules. Don't overstay your welcome. Don't park somewhere where you're not supposed to be parked. Don't leave rubbish around. Don't go to the toilet in the bushes, in some beautiful native bush, which seems to happen here in New Zealand, unfortunately. Leave toilet paper and all sorts in the bush. If you stick to the rules, um, you're not only sort of preserve those sites for, for future travelers, but you'll also just, you'll have an easier time. You won't get hassled um, by the local people. You know, the things that annoy New Zealanders is when someone comes to their town and leaves rubbish in a car park and goes for a poo in the bushes <laughs> like th those things would annoy anyone in their backyard i suppose so i think as long as you stick to those rules observe the signs don't push the limits don't stay longer than you're supposed to you know just keep you follow the rules i think at the end of the day if you follow the rules you'll be fine have a torch lock your doors at night um don't leave your val valuables on like the seat of your camper van you know make sure they're hidden um, you know, don't leave sort of opportunities for thieves to just break a window and take your GoPro or something like that. But yeah, I think ultimately there is some awesome spots here in New Zealand that are free. Um, some have toilets, some have showers. You know, we even, yeah, we stayed at one just down the road that has showers in it. Free showers, hot showers. So you can't beat that, you know, and um, it's a lot cheaper and, and a lot more cost effective way of seeing New Zealand than if you're staying at a campsite for $40, $50 a night as you travel around. So. If you have any questions about freedom camping, if you are unsure about any of the sites or you want more info on any of the sites we stayed in, fire away in the comments, I'll answer those for you. And I will see you shortly with another caravan adventure. Thanks for watching.